everybody here, but we've got five of us right now. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us on a, in the middle of March madness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a sacrifice, right? <laughs> I do. I know. And, um, you know, everybody can kind of have their smartphone on the side and check their bracket. <laughs> or teams. No, uh, no. So with that, I don't have any um, other business. I'll just hand it over to you, Dr. Ken Cannon. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone. We're in for a great meeting this evening. We do have a lot um, to get accomplished, and it uh, will be very similar in format to our last meeting. Um, the only thing I have to mention is that it, we do have a packed meeting, and we do want to try to get done by 8 o'clock. So as you think of questions, if you could put them in the chat box or hold them, that would be great. And we'll try to get to those as we can. And of course, as, uh, as we did last time, there'll be plenty of opportunity um, to talk in our smaller groups. So O'Connell Robertson, take it away. Yes. Great, thank you, Dr. Cannon, and appreciate everybody's effort. And for me, Texas Tech lost out of the, the bracket. So the March Madness is over. Uh, so <laughs> Thank <laughs> your uh, attention here on the presentation tonight, but appreciate everybody's uh, participation and focus. And of course, we're going to have fun tonight. Uh, this is meeting number five for us. Uh, so we are nearing the end of this initial process with just a couple more meetings to go. Uh, and as Dr. McCannon indicated, we're going to par parallel a lot of the efforts uh, as we did last meeting where we discussed the high school strategies. This time we're going to focus in on the middle school strategy. So we're gonna run through a couple of facility examples to get uh, a feeling for what some additions and renovations would feel like, uh, talk about some of the key metrics, which you'll see are again parallel, uh, and then dig deep into the middle school options for breaking out from there. So welcome everybody here again, and we'll jump into some facility examples and uh, really are giving these are less than uh, our, our options as we move forward but they really represent uh, what middle school facilities can be uh, as a new facility or renovation. And the first facility that we identify is Danville Middle School. This is one for Comal ISD. It was a brand new facility on a Greenfield site, uh, roughly about 166,000 square feet to support 1,050 students. And one of the key concepts here, uh, and you see it really in the top right image and a little bit of the bottom right image, uh, is the library is really the heart of the school. Uh, it really is the focus of the campus with the educational classrooms around it, uh, but really provides a facilitating and collaborative space. That idea of collaboration is pulled throughout the facility. You see those in the rest of the, the images uh, from breakout areas where students can extend the learning environment beyond the classroom, uh, create flexibility uh, in terms of use, being able to use the learning stair uh, or the space outside of the library. And that theme is carried really throughout uh, into the central cafeteria and the learning commons, uh, and then as well to outdoor dining and really kind of invigorates the campus with natural light, learning throughout, learning on display. Great opportunity to do uh, in a greenfield site. As we move to the next image, uh, this is our second example here, is Gerald Middle School. So this is a small community north of the Austin area, north of Georgetown. Uh, and here, this facility was originally the K-12 campus for the district since 1912. Uh, starting in about 2005, the district was growing uh, as part of it being an Austin server and started adding facilities, including their high school, a new high school and a new elementary school. But here they wanted to really come back and study the opportunities for turning this into a middle school campus. I look at this example as we talk about facilities moving forward tonight is identifying a key element on the site uh, that we want to maintain or doing additions and renovations on the existing site uh, that it's entirely possible. So in this sketch, you'll see the buildings that are outlined in the white dashed areas are existing facilities that were maintained on the campus. Uh, and they actually ended up supporting a middle or a intermediate school and then the area that's shown in the blue box is an existing gym that was identified to have value uh, in moving forward. So from that core element of the new gym, the red blocks 
represent a new facility that in essence was added on to that existing gymnasium, uh, which included new performing fine arts space, cafeteria, gymnasium, and then the core educational space. So as we look at the next slide and look at what that looks like, for all intents and purposes, it really looks and feels like a new campus. You have one of the existing gyms there at the top left uh, space, where it is that existing building that created that anchor. Uh, and here as well, we really focused on creating a safe and secure campus during construction, uh, required a lot of coordination while it was an active campus, but then as well focused afterwards uh, to create a new facility. We really create work to create an identifiable entry uh, and then implement uh, elements of modest 21st century learning environment throughout. Uh, so a very high tech library in the bottom left, putting education and futures on display in the bottom right, all the way to giving a world purview in the top right. That's a map of the world with time zones uh, to really kind of give a sense of, of students and the world beyond uh, at what, where they live. So a great opportunity there uh, in that campus was built almost 10 years ago now. Our next example is North Belton Middle School. Uh, and so this is one that Dr. Kanan is actually very familiar with, was constructed in 2015, is about 2,600 students. Uh, and here this design really focused on a, core, a centralized core of library, cafeteria, and gymnasium. And it's really the, the two photographs that you see at the top uh, that are then uh, flanked by two classroom wings that are on each side. Those classroom wings that you see in the bottom right are again focused on that 21st century learning environment where you see the classroom through the, the glass on the right. Uh, students can push in and pull out and they have fingertip uh, access to whiteboards, projectors, soft seating and furniture uh, within that design. Dr. McCannon, is there anything you'd like to add on this one? No, it's a pretty great design, a uh, two-story building and those breakout spaces in the uh, end of each classroom wing are pretty phenomenal um, for the students to use and gather. Great. Well, as we move into the options tonight, we want, wanted to frame these examples as everything that is possible as we move forward from a new facility to additions and renovations on an existing campus. And so we might use these tools or these options as we look at the individual site. Uh, but again, you'll see that we're going to kind of step out and look at more as a global picture as we talk about the middle school designs. And so we'll again hit in the key metrics for middle schools and Casey, you're gonna believe, take it from here. Yep. And so this slide is probably familiar. Actually, the next couple slides are repeating a cadence that we've been doing the last few meetings. So don't worry, we haven't gone back in time. So just to remind you, the lenses for considerations are things, you know, we as a design team and you as a community, you know, you're sort of keeping in our mind to help us evaluate um, options or considerations for the district. We're going to pick on just three of these um, to, to delve into. Uh, so if we could go to next, please. Thank you. And so just as a refresher course for those who don't see this map frequently or maybe have kids out of school at this point, uh, the district currently has four um, middle schools uh, that, that are shown here. Uh, this does not show um, Lake Air Montessori. So I guess five middle schools total, uh, Lake Air Montessori, unfortunately, is not showing on this map, but we've got um, Carver up in the north. We've got Indian Springs sort of floating around in the middle. Cesar Chavez over to the right and or to the bottom right, and then Tennyson over to the left or the west side of the map. If we could go to the next one. Oh, back one, please. Thank you. And so this again, familiar. Um, we, we delved into this a little deeper in high school and, you know, really Waco ISD, you know, has, has a vision beyond just, you know, we're talking a lot about the state of facilities and the state of facilities goes beyond just the physical in infrastructure. And so what types of spaces does this 
facility need to support for educating lifelong learners? You know, we want the students to have the tools at hand and the teachers as well to help facilitate, you know, the big issues we wanna to touch on is are we able to teach students how to collaborate? Can't, do we have opportunities for students to be a little more self-directed, you know, comes in stages versus fair, over various campus sizes? Are we able to integrate th critical thinking? And that goes everything from your lessons to all the way through project-based activities, learning. And so spaces can support that in a variety of well. Uh, in a variety of ways, as well as we want to instill appreciation of creativity, imagination. So having spaces that allow us to, to go ahead and do that. So if we could go to the next one. And so this is, uh, from, should be a little bit familiar to you. We've got the demographics up to the top. And so this just takes into account the four comprehensive middle schools. Again, Indian Springs, or not Indian Spring, um, Lake Air Montessori is missing from this metric here. And, and so you can see in the yellow highlight, that's the fall, that's the most recent fall semester that just ended. And you can see total capacity or total enrollment across all your elementary school or middle schools was just over 2,800 students. And then if you look sort of two columns over to the left, you see a capacity column where you can see the schools uh, many of the schools are actually built over size, um, you know, that they were built at a time, with the exception of Tennyson, you know, they were built at a time that, uh, you know, really, th we just haven't filled them up as of recent. And so when we, the chart down to the bottom, when we look at middle school capacity, you know, that's what it's summarizing, the first four lines total, how we have to 3,720 students, we have the capacity for in middle school. Now to help us with the math, math there, that's 22% our enrollment, 22% over our enrollment. So we've got a lot of extra space here. And so if we keep all the facilities as is, you know, we'll, we'll keep that existing space. But um, you know, ultimately, if we decide to, we as a group decide or recommend you know, renovation or potentially replacement of facilities, we would recommend a target of closer to 3000 students capacity. That is still 5% above your maximum and projected enrollment. And that still gets everybody out of portables. And so you just keep 3000 in your mind as we're moving forward to, to go over some other things. And I wanted to refresh, this one uh, came across our meeting talk. a couple meetings ago. And here is just talking a little bit about school size. And so, you know, if we were to max the size uh, or match the size of Cesar Chavez, which is your most recent middle school, you know, that's just over a thousand students, you know, there's a certain uh, implication to staffing and support of that. Whereas if we were to consider smaller schools, which is currently how they are, they're, they're in larger facilities, but some of your middle schools are actually closer to this capacity. You know, the staffing impact is cost per student and fixed cost, you know, does, does change. So again, we're not, we're just sort of planting the seed here because when we talk about, you know, sizing of schools beyond just the physical space that we're purchasing and maintaining, it's also a staffing impact uh, in terms of costs. We could go to the next one. And again, <laughs> sorry about that, insert lake air. And so uh, this slide we've, we've gone over a few times and the top is indicating, you know, from our facilities conditions assessment, that's looking at the school, what needs to be replaced, everything from roofing to flooring to better windows to include mechanical systems. You know, if we were just to bring um, Asian facilities up to modern standards, you know, the costs are summarized at the bottom. As a reminder, this does not address modern or current teaching pedagogy. So this does not necessarily support project-based learning or collaboration spaces or any of those. This is just to get the physical buildings up to date. So if we, again, leave out Lake Air Montessori for now, you know, we're coming in of total a little over a hundred million dollars just to get the existing facilities up to um, modern standards. So we could go to the next one. And here, best opportunities and potential projects. So along the north-south axis or the vertical, you know, you're tracking educational suitability. And so that's saying, you know, this, this school has spaces for collaboration or project-based learning or flexibility for inclusion, et cetera. 
and down at the bottom, the east to west uh, horizontal access, we're showing the facilities conditions assessment. This is the physical state of the building. So to the top right would be the highest scoring schools. To the bottom left would be the lowest scoring, scoring schools. So what we can see from here is Tennyson, for example, is in the worst shape, both in terms of physical environment and educational environment. Whereas we have a whole bunch in this middle range, you know, Carver, Indian Spring, or, and Cesar Chavez are both addressing modern teaching in, in the middle range, whereas Cesar Chavez is much better off uh, physically. Uh, as it is the newest facility, that kind of makes sense, you know, sort of, this sort of verifies our, our knowledge of it. Yeah. And then, Jared, do you want to talk us through sort of setting the stage, or you want me to? I can jump in too, Casey. Um, and really just wanted to, uh, before we jump into the options specifically, um, just remind everybody as we look through these, uh, that we are looking at this really as the long-term opportunity over the next 15 years. Um, so, uh, you know, this, the bridge here representing the vision forward, not just the, the short term. And so, uh, as we look at these options, you know, knowing that, uh, it may not be that, um, the proposed project or, you know, a solution is happening, uh, in the immediate, uh, or, you know, over the next uh, couple of years, it's really that 15 year timeline, uh, for these projects. So if we can go to the options here, you'll see there are three, uh, that will be presenting here. Uh, and the first one uh, is really, as Casey had mentioned, about maintaining those systems is just uh, providing that baseline of keeping these existing facilities uh, operational. Uh, and I'll point out between the three options here, uh, it'll, it's important to note that option one maintains a total of uh, five middle schools and options two and three uh, have a total of four middle schools. And you'll see uh, there on options two and three. Uh, that would be consolidating, consolidating Carver and Indian Spring. Uh, and then that third option is different and that it also would propose to replace Tennyson. So if we'll go to the uh, next slide here, just a little bit uh, more description on this uh, baseline of uh, what would happen at those campuses. And you'll see there uh, Carver, Indian Spring, Tennyson, Cesar Chavez and Lake Air Montessori would just be receiving those facilities improvements. Uh, and so this again is no impact uh, or improvements to educational space. Uh, that does leave your total middle school capacity at what it is currently at, which is 3,720 students. And if we look at option two, um, this would again, um, just kind of showing uh, what's possible out there just as an option. Uh, again, that plane you'll see in the top right is not uh, a final decision or design or a layout. It is simply suggesting uh, you know, a concept um, to kind of get the conversation going. And this would be a proposal to uh, consolidate Carver and Indian Spring. Uh, and just showing there that it is possible that you could fit that new facility on uh, the Carver site uh, as an example. So I, I would, have an idea. I'm sorry, this is Ilda Sabido. Is sure. it okay if I... Yeah. Please, yeah, please jump in. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you guys ever thought about using Indian Springs Middle School for Lake Air Montessori's Middle School and for our districts to be able to offer a little bit more in that area as far as um, Montessori? Dr. King Cannon? No, we haven't thought of that idea. <laughs> Sorry, I just came back. I mean, just to be the, honest, that was a, that's a new idea. <laughs> oh, great. Well, it was just something to think about. I think that Lake Air is growing quite a bit, and it's definitely um, something that has attracted people. I know it attracted me to Waco ISD. My child goes there. Um, so it's just something to think about if sure, we are going to consolidate uh, with Con Carver. Carver um, that leaves an, a building and an opportunity for more attraction to our educational system. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and just a quick question from Aaron Zimmerman here. Uh, just if this plan was done, the consolidation of Carver and Indian Spring, and if you're gonna answer this later, then ignore me now, um, but what would happen to the Indian Spring campus? And that- yeah, so I think, you know, Ilda threw an idea out there, but I'll throw another idea out there. Um, that it could become the administration building for Waco ISD and we could 
um, potentially sell the current administration building, which really, um, really lacks a lot in terms of professional development and our ability to bring people in for training. And um, those 10 floors make collaboration really hard um, with our staff. So that's one idea we had. Um, right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely, and these are all great uh, thoughts. And again, we're just putting these out there initially just to get that conversation uh, and get the ball rolling. Uh, and so again, as we as we're showing these options, uh, you know, just keeping in mind that it's not just you know just these three here. We're we're open to having that conversation and can um, can look at especially yeah what happens uh, with the Indian Spring campus as well as um, options for um, the new the new facility. Uh, and so you'll see. Uh, on, on the left side of the screen there, um, that this does uh, remove the, um, the FCA scope from Carver and Indian Spring um, for the most part. And down there at the bottom, that estimate is uh, shown basically to compare your baseline with uh, the new facility. And so what that 50 to 60 million number is representing is essentially the, uh, how, you know, what, what's it gonna take to keep that building going for the next 10 to 15 years. And then that uh, additional $10 million is what uh, is, is option two, which is building the new facility to replace uh, or to consolidate Carver and Indian Spring. So we're showing, trying to show apples to apples here of, uh, you know, your op option one um, to option two and just, you know, how that cost, how that cost is different. Um, and then you'll see too, that the middle school capacity by consolidating does come down a little bit closer to that 3,000 number, um, right at 2,910. Um, Jared, did you want to chime in with anything on this option? Yeah, so I think it, as we looked at the options and, the, and to answer a couple of questions that Aaron, you had asked about uh, enrollment and forecast uh, within the chat and, and that the numbers are based on the demographer's estimate. So he is looking at regionally what is occurring and then specifically what is happening within the Waco ISD boundaries. And so I think, yes, to answer your question simply, yes, the growth is outside of Waco ISD uh, from there. And that was some of the information that we had presented, uh, I think, last meeting or the meeting before that. Uh, but they, he has about a 30 page presentation where he's chasing housing starts and those kind of things. Yeah, they look at historical data and birth rates, and they usually trend pretty much on track. Um, okay, thank you. At housing as well. And so I think to then get into the options, so option number one is in essence, create the baseline of where we wanna move forward. And so as we really studied the data that was before us from the capacity and the enrollment uh, to then looking at what, how do we move forward? What is the opportunity cost for a new school? Uh, and also additionally listening to some input, you know, just like, uh, Ms. Sabito had indicated, here's a great idea. Well, let's chase that idea. And so the discussion was, you know, looking at the communities of Indian Springs and Carver, and generally those campuses are about half used in terms of capacity enrollment. So there's that opportunity as we look forward to kind of bring together the, the items that we talked about in lenses from operational cost, but then also opportunity to enhance the number of staff per student because you have a, a, a higher uh, ca uh, campus enrollment. Uh, and then as well, the, you know, I look at it, the opportunity cost, and I think you see it, there are, what we saw is at the bottom line is to maintain the facilities exactly as they are, you're seeing 50 to $60 million of cost. And for, you know, a premium of $10 million, you know, you get a brand new facility between the two that meets all those educational needs uh, from that standpoint. So the 50 to 60 million, remember, would just be addressing materials and systems and not addressing educational space. So it would be over and above that. So really, you, know, you could say option one, if you wanted to implement all the goals would be above it. And so that's this balance that we're really looking at uh, and wanted to present of how do we address student, the, the district goals for educational, how do we address capacity and long-term operational? And some of the lenses is, is, is really the feedback we're looking from this group of, you know, how does this look and feel as we move forward? 
So any questions about option two before we move over to option three? Uh, this is uh, Trustee Manning uh, from District 1, uh, Waco Independent School District. Uh, are we considering uh, family? Are we considering uh, pe people in, 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 in the East Waco District also? Yes, this, oh, go ahead, Jared. I was going to say, is there, could you, it, absolutely, that's what we're looking for. And I think the question would be, do you have a specific concern there or anything that we would want to address? Uh, yeah, yeah uh, be, because we are always interested in neighborhood schools. We, we have to be uh, 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 looking at where, how far do our, our kids have to go to uh, uh, attend schools? Absolutely. And I think as you look at the map, that was part of the reason we had shown that is those are two of the closest campuses uh, in location. Okay. Uh, uh, well, okay. Well, well, well I'm, I'm sl slightly confused right now. Uh, they may be close in, in, in area and stuff like that. But uh, what will the parents and the kids that need to go to these uh, to the schools? What what will that entail? Yeah, so I think it. You know, when you when you change when you make a change like this, and you take a campus offline, and you relocate yeah. students, then you would redraw attendance boundaries, and you would look at your transportation services. Um, you know, I think in spring, it, you know, I don't know that you necessarily consider that a neighborhood school, although I'm still new to the community, um, but I'm not sure that that would be in, in any further for students to go to Carver, but we'd have to look at the map and study that. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to, uh, put the uh, point that, uh, Dealing with the uh, people over here in, in District 1 and District 2 that uh, that may not float. So, and I think, Mr. Manning, one of the things that we would love to hear as we, as we move forward is that feedback from the group. It, it fundamentally, is this option palatable? And would the community support this type of option? And I think we'll have some time to talk about that in our small groups and then share out. Well, I'm, de I'm, 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 I'm definitely, because of the feedback that I get, we want to keep community schools over here in the East Waco area. We, 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 have, we have to keep them. And, and you know, you're talking about uh, uh, with J.H. Hines, you're talking about uh, Carver and even Indian, Indian Springs. We in the East Waco area need to keep our, uh, our community schools. <clears throat> Correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounded like this proposal is to keep the existing Carver campus, which would be, uh, is, is in East Waco, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this um, this drawing that Jared has shows Carver being built on right on site on the same site it's already on. So, oh. it's just it, like Waco High School, it would be a rebuild, but it would combine Indian Spring and um, Carver. So the most beautiful, most technologically advanced, newest middle school in Waco would be in East Waco in this proposal. That's correct. Okay. And, and, and is that also saying that that we will el uh, el el eliminate Indian Springs? 
Yes, that's this op that is this option that um, Jared is showing you all right now. It takes Indian Spring offline and builds a new school on the Carver property. Okay, what would be the uh, capacity of, of the new school? So right now we're proposing, if we're showing 1,060 students, you, we'd really want to hone in on the right number there, but that matches Chavez Middle School. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also matches Tennyson, they're all in that 900 plus range. But it, it but like I say, the, the uh, bottom line, they still keep the school over in the East Waco uh, neighborhood. Correct. Okay. Norman, that's this that's this one proposal. Okay, let's. I mean, that's it's one possibility, but let's 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 keep looking and see see what else is available. We're we're not we're gonna make we're not gonna make these decisions tonight. Yeah, we, we're gonna go work through. Jared's gonna work through all of them, and then we'll talk about them all in small groups. Yeah, we're we're getting kind of bogged down in this. Well, I think it, it's important and it, it does lead in because it is a key factor in, in the next option here. And so I think as we looked at the data uh, and that's really about the facility condition assessment, we heard a lot of discussion you know, from the district about needing to meet the needs of Indian Springs and Carver. Uh, and that's uh, observable on site. It's what we've identified as the data. Uh, but when you look at it as well, Tennyson also has additional need, uh, not only in terms of the condition of the facilities, uh, but then as well, <clears throat> the uh, number of portables and, and ultimate capacity of the district. And so I bring, want to bring back the idea of, you know, as we look out, 10 to 15 years down the road, we're not saying any of these would happen all within the first five years, but that long-term plan would be over time is again, look at consolidating uh, Carver and middle school and Indian Springs middle school onto the Carver middle school site, maintain a new facility in East Waco, and then working through a replacement school at Tennyson middle school. Uh, and that's the diagram that you see at the bottom right. So in that, I will roughly say five to 15 year period, that's when a new Tennyson Middle School would come online. Ultimately, so that the district would have three, I'll call it comprehensive middle schools uh, at Carver, Tennyson and Chavez, roughly at about the 1060 student level. And in addition, Lake Air Montessori, which would support the pre-K through eighth grade program. Uh, and that pair of four uh, schools would meet the capacity needs, the maintaining the capacity needs with some extra uh, for Waco ISD to address that next 10 to 15, total 10 to 15 year period. Okay, uh, my, 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 my next question is, uh, and, and uh, you may not be, be able to even answer this, when are we going to get the census information on the growth a Waco Independent School District. So I, that that's coming in the next few months. The uh, the government we're behind because of COVID, um, but it's coming. <laughs> Probably October. I don't remember what month we were expecting that, and that's I think that's a sidebar again. That 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 definitely is a sidebar, but I I. I um, and, and 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 I know I, I realize that, but that is going to be a very important component of of what we're looking at in the future. Sure. So. And I think that that's the information from the demographics that really helps support the discussion about the population and moving forward. And there are a couple of questions uh, in, uh, from the, in terms of the current and proposed attendance zone. The map that was included on slide 14 uh, it are the current attendance zones. And what we're looking for tonight is really a feeling from the community about the approach to these options. Uh, if we decided to move forward with one of these options, then we would then look at attendance zones at a later date. Uh, at that time uh, upon the campus, we'd be talking a new middle school would roughly come online in, in four to five years uh, time frame uh, in terms of making things happen. 
uh, from that side. And then the challenges with the, the Tennyson become uh, overall, there's a lot of additions uh, to the campus. So students are having to access the building outside. So in terms of a safe and secure campus uh, from a perimeter, that's a challenge. The size of the classrooms, uh, not only the core classrooms, but the performing and fine arts spaces are a challenge. And then overall, the capacity of the school, it, permanent capacity uh, of the school is roughly about 900, uh, I think, sorry, it's 700 and there's about 900 students attending the campus at this time. So they're using the portables to facilitate the, the core education uh, space from there. I'm good. And let's see, any, any other questions about these options? Okay, so I think it really as we move to the next slide, what it, this really kind of summarizes the, the three of, again, what we've been looking at in terms of the data, and you'll see option number one is maintaining the campuses as is. Uh, option number two is looking at a consolidation onto Carver, the Carver Middle School site of the two campuses. And then option number three adds on the replacement middle school at the Tennyson Middle School site. And you'll, if you'll give us one more click here, uh, you'll see that then we're looking at the middle school capacity across the options of, of bringing down the number of campuses supporting. It opens up the opportunity for future use of the Indian Springs Middle School site for additional programs, whether it's administration or as Ms. Sabito suggested, maybe look at some uh, another educational program. Uh, and then the last click here will get relative cost uh, between the two in terms of the baseline cost, about a $10 million premium and about a $50 million premium for the addition of those campuses. And so as we transition here, we're going to transition into our breakout groups. And we're going to do a three-step process. Uh, the first is we're going to poll everybody and get, get a sense of where they stand right now. Uh, then we would break out into groups and we'll talk a little bit about the breakout of the groups, but the goal is really to discuss these options and those lenses, which include all the things that y'all been talking about. So you're right on, on top of it from the impact to education, location and neighborhood schools, transportation, operational cost. Uh, but again, keep in mind that we're thinking 10 to 15 years down the road. We'll come back, report out, and then we want to take a final poll to see if people's opinions have changed uh, there along the line. So we'll start off with the first poll. Uh, and so if you will bring out your phone uh, and what you will see there again is if you will text, uh, the phone number you will text is 22333. And the, the first message in the text you will type is OCR1950. And it'll say, congratulations, you've joined. And then you will add in, you will text 1234 or one of the options. For the options and we'll give everybody here uh, about 30 seconds and then we'll start looking at the poll results and see if we're getting close to uh, about 60 responses see those responses starting to trickle in we got 15 to 20 responses there and Jared are you saying that a, a new school on the Carver site would cost 10 million dollars no we're saying a new school would cost 10 million dollars as a premium up to uh, maintaining the schools okay so what are you suggesting the school itself would cost Doug, do you remember that number off the top of your head? If not, I'll it, pull. It, it was between 60 and 66 million, somewhere around the 65 million. Am I, is that ringing a bell, Jared? That sounds about right. I think it was 66 million. What's the capacity of J. Chines? Uh, Hines Elementary School, I believe, is 1,050. And so what you'll see, and actually as we work in reverse, 
Uh, it's a discussion that goes on. We've started at the high school level, which actually has the most specialized space uh, from the gymnasiums, the number of seats to uh, CTE labs. And as you work down towards elementary, it's the, uh, for uh, ten, uh, simple terms, it's the most simplistic space. The cost per square foot actually decreases uh, along that lines. So middle schools are in the middle of the road between the high school, which has the highest cost and elementary school like Heinz that has the lowest cost between the two. I'm seeing in the chat a question, um, a, a reminder about the differences between option two and three. Could we go back one slide? And, yep, well, maybe not. <laughs> Jared, do you want to recap this again, the differences between option two and three? Sure. So, uh, uh, and I'll recap them all uh, as it is. So option one is keeping the facilities as is. So, oh, you can stay on that slide uh, or either way. But option one is maintaining the five middle schools as they are right now and improving the systems uh, to be able to support that. So does it, the key with that option would be is you're not addressing educational space and option number one. As we look at option number two, that would be consolidating the students from Indian Springs and Carver Middle School onto the Carver Middle School, site, providing a new campus on the East Waco uh, area. Option three is my favorite state. Complete that consolidation as well for Indian Springs and Carver, but adds a replacement Indian Springs Middle School project to that. So you no longer just maintain this, you would replace that campus as well. Replace it, Tennyson. It sounded like you said replace Indian Spring or like with a new Indian Spring, but a new Tennyson, right? Be a new tennis. Option three is a new Tennyson and then a, I'll call it a new Carver Middle School. And option and you, two is a new Carver Middle School as well, just no new Tennyson. Correct. May I, yeah, see may, there was a may, 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 may I add a comment to this? Uh, <laughs> Springs is located. In your Springs is some prime property uh, for, uh, for for the city of Waco, and 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 and, and, and that has been uh, added that the fact that. Uh, you, yeah, you, what well, you, you build? I mean, with the growth of Waco that's going on, like that, that Indian Springs could be a location for a major uh, a, a, a hotel and stuff like that. So, um, with the money that we could get if we stole Indian Springs, be put into the Enlargement and development of Carver. So that that money could be, and I'll let Dr. McCannon jump in as well. But yes, you you could do that, and I believe what we were looking at is from this group we were looking at it, how do we address the middle school impact, and I would say decisions like that could be deferred to the board level. Uh, that you could discuss what is the future of that property again. We could bring some options. Uh, and, you know, the one option that was discussed is central administration. You could opt to sell that property as well. Uh, Jared, you make a good point. There are a lot of, there are just a lot of moving parts. And I, I feel like we're all getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> um, and so I don't want to lose the time we have tonight to break out into our small groups to discuss these options that you propose. For clarity, before you leave that slide, Will, will you refresh uh, all of our memories on the prices that we're talking about, which I think was Hope's question earlier. Um, so what would the, what would the amount of money, um, what, what's the cost of options one, two, and three when it comes to a proposed bond? So let me... I, I think I think the question that would be helpful is that you could say what is baseline and then we're adding 10 million dollars or 50 million dollars to that for option two or three. Thank you. If you can just tell us what baseline is that would be helpful, which I is agree. option one. The baseline is roughly uh, in 
we'll double check this while we're looking at it, but roughly 130 to $140 million over the 15 year period. Over so then for option two, you're adding $10 million to that. For option three, you're adding $50 million to that. Yes, sir. Got it. But Jared, what would the cost? Okay. Okay. All right. I'm with you. Have, oh, have, you, have you stated what the cost of the new of a new school? And that's on this slide here, 60 to 70 million. 60 to 70. So okay. you're building, if you build two new middle schools, you're one 150 ish or no. Okay. 120 to 130. 140. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good deal. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I want to keep us moving so we don't run out of time. It's a great. lot of good discussion, but I but I fear we're gonna we're gonna hit eight o'clock in like two minutes, and I don't want to do that. Uh, Angela, this is Crystal. Yes. I would yes. like to know when the Lake Air Montessori School is going to be addressed because it was built to be a junior high, and we have pre K through eighth grade there now. And if all we're looking at with option three is to maintain the existing facility, um, I'm, I'm wondering if we're gonna have any, uh, like with the elementary discussion at our next meeting, are we gonna talk about the Lake Air facility at all or is that not on the table right now? That's a good question. Is Lake Air um, Montessori going to be discussed as part of our elementary discussion next time? So right now we were approaching Lake Air, I will say as maintaining the existing facilities that we were not looking at uh, I'll say a replacement type campus. So there are some funds to address things at Lake Air Montessori, but it wasn't the big move uh, like we've been talking about with the three other middle schools. So, but, so when you say um, to address some changes, you're not talking about instructional facility. You're talking about just like heating and air conditioning and bathrooms and things like that, but not making educational space age appropriate for pre-K through eighth grade at Lake Air, as you're talking about it right now, correct? Right now, yes. Okay. And so I think that I'll say that's a great transition into the discussions. I wanted to just point out the, the answers here that everybody gave right now. So there's a few on option one or another, uh, but it looks like the majority of people are, are in support of the consolidation and replacement of the three middle schools. And so on our next slide, we are going to break out into small groups. Uh, our goal is uh, we're going to have 20 minutes to discuss with a 20 minute with a one minute warning, very similar to we did last time. Uh, an O'Connell Robertson team member will be within each group to help moderate. And really, our goal is to discuss these things and confirm, you know, what are the challenges, those kind of things. So, Chris, to your point, uh, if you wanted to really see some improvement to like Eric, you could say that our group's recommendation is to follow option three, but we want to see educational improvements at Lake Air Montessori. Okay. As well. Good. Thank you. Uh, and so our goal would be is to come back here in 20 minutes and regroup uh, and follow through and then confirm the direction option one, two, or three. And if there are any bonus projects, then we will look at that uh, as we move forward. So any questions? And if not, then we will switch. Ask uh, Josh to switch us over. Yeah, I'll switch over. And then <clears throat> also uh, a member of O'Connor Robertson will report and summarize when we resume. Yes, thank you for that reminder.
Hey, Josh. Hey, I'm going to move you right now.
Looks like we're just all about getting back. Josh, if you want to let us know when we're all back in the main room. Yep, it's officially closed. Okay, awesome. Well, appreciate everybody's uh, discussion here and we're gonna go around and let uh, the team members uh, kind of report out. So I'll go first for our group. Uh, so our group uh, was pretty solidly for option number three uh, and they had identified the needs at very specific and, and uh, necessary needs at Tennyson, including the portables and addressing capacity, permanent capacity there at the facility, as well as Carver. Uh, they really felt that the instructional opportunities of new middle schools can really help uh, create opportunities from an educational planning standpoint. Uh, there was concern, uh, which we would talk here as we move forward about how to address those priorities uh, moving forward uh, between the two middle schools amongst the high school and everything else. Uh, and then we are, we are sharing uh, baseball scores here. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we're going to look at it, or the idea was improving the middle schools and high school campuses uh, really can support maintaining the schools, but also will help competition against the adjacent districts. Uh, so as you're competing against Midland or China Springs, it really give, gives the educational facilities a gem to attract students uh, at that secondary level uh, to stay within the district. Uh, and finally, there's some mention of unicorns, but I didn't really catch that comment uh, within our group. So. All right, uh, Doug, you wanna jump on your group? Sure, yeah, thanks, Jared. Um, again, yeah, thanks, wanna say thanks to our group as well. Uh, really great conversation. Uh, and I think uh, one of the things that came up first was uh, actually some discussion about, you know, does uh, providing these new facilities, uh, you know, potentially bring in uh, some people and some families back to the district that um, haven't been uh, been there, you know, up, up until now. And so, um, you know, having some some facilities uh, that that people uh, the students can really take pride in, um, being a, a really strong point. Um, and then it was also mentioned, uh, you know, really encouraging to see that. Uh, the newer facilities could be uh, achieved for uh, a more reasonable premium as compared to the uh, facility conditions assessment costs. Uh, and so really our group, I think all leans towards option three, uh, noting some really uh, um, specific concerns at Tennyson, uh, for example, that, you know, the sixth grade classes in portables and they really struggle with, uh, you know, weather conditions when it's raining, uh, having to move between classes outside and, um, you know, really, getting um getting wet and, and basically staying wet throughout the whole uh day is something that was uh so brought up and um you know it was also mentioned that uh you know the opportunity for new facilities that has as learning has adapted and changed over the next or over the last several years uh, that our facilities really need to take on that level and adapt and provide learning spaces to foster uh creative thinking and you know independent collaborative learning so um the last thing I'll mention was technology, uh, and there really is a struggle in a lot of the older facilities to incorporate newer technology, um, and that, uh, you know, it's something to think about, um, you know, when you do a renovation that it's not always as easy as plug and play with the technology. Sometimes it takes a little bit more than that, and it's not always as reliable. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, it was, again, really great conversation. Thanks to my group, uh, and I will pass it over to Amy. Great. Thanks, Doug. Great report. I had a great group. I think we were group two and um, we, we were, we had a lot of good input. So on option one, I would say this, this group was not in favor at all. Uh, some of the feedback was, you know, that, that we've done this, this is what we've been doing over the years and it's time to kind of move on and, and um, make some big changes. So option one was not preferred to only address the, the facility condition assessment issues. Uh, however, during this conversation, there was a request that um, we be sure and, and look back at Lake Air Montessori and its needs for improvements, the, the facility condition there. Um, some of the people in the group would really like to see some investment in this uh, campus and understand that that could be a long range plan, but they'd like to see it talked about in the plan. Um, 
but everybody did agree it's it's well maintained and the staff is great but just there are some facility issues there as well uh, Option number two was consolidate Carver and Indian Springs. We had some good conversation about this. Um, it's definitely favored over option one, at least. Um, a couple of the comments made were um, to please be sure that we, um, that, that the district consider keeping the Carver name for its historic importance and community importance if there is any sort of consolidation or combining of campuses to make sure that that's considered. Um, the group really loved the idea of, of having new facilities but are worried about the cost since we haven't talked yet about uh, potential bond capacity. So they're keeping that in mind but feel like if we can afford it, uh, we should do it for the kids. Um, another topic that came up here was just, just voicing some concern about any type of a consolidation or combining of campuses. Um, while these two seem to make a lot of sense from geography and attendance, I uh, wanted the district to be sure to keep in mind this is always a concern for community members. And so think about the impact on a neighborhood of past boundary changes or consolidations and you know the communications and, and all those things involved when considering which schools are taken offline. And then the other, the other uh, positive aspect here that was discussed is, you know, the potential option of repurposing uh, one of these schools for another great community use and district use, such as uh, a possible administration building, as was mentioned. So then that took us to option three, which, um, you know, which was the favored choice. We took a thumbs up vote with our with our Zoom uh, reaction button and uh, it was overwhelmingly the choice. It might have been unanimous, but a few of us had a hard time finding the thumbs up button, but you know, we, we overcame. Uh, so this is the option that uh, our group would choose if it's possible. Some of the feedback was just that Tennyson is busting at the seams, uh, so many portables create some challenges um, as well as, as you know, economical issues uh, at this campus. So the thumbs up choice um, was option three for our group. Thank you all too, y'all were awesome. And I will pass it over to uh, Jessica. Thank you. Um, so we, our group had a lot of similar, um, I'm gonna echo probably a lot of things that Amy's group just discussed, but overall, um, our group felt that option three is the best um, with, with, out of the options that were presented this evening. And they did say that keeping Carver is very important to the community and feel that it would, could even enhance the area um, given um, upgrades and you know addressing a lot of those facility needs. But, one concern about um, combining these schools, uh, Carver and Indian Springs, is the cost of transportation, which um, as I'm assuming that as we move further down the line, that would be addressed. But that is something that the group felt very strongly about um, in that addressing, you know, the busing and the situation for those kids over there. Um, the other kind of slight hesitancy about option three for our group was um, Tennyson. They were uh, very overall just kind of curious as to why it ranked low. So would like to see some of the information um, on the rankings and how um, we arrived um, at, that, at those rankings and would like to see the comparisons from the other middle schools on that part. Uh, but did agree too that the portables definitely needed to be um, addressed. Um, but kind of also said maybe once we see all of that, maybe it's not a whole new campus that Tennyson needs. Um, and that way um, it could kind of use money to address another topic that we discussed, which was Lake Air. Um, and Lake Air just being um, monumental in the community as far as it's, it's a huge attraction for the district. Um, and so just addressing some of those educational needs, those classrooms that are um, not quite appealing to the preschoolers right now, that that could possibly be a way. But, you know, overall, um, would like to see some of the information on how we arrived um, on Lake Air and kind of see more of that facilities assessments and some of the data to review before that's completely um, taken off of the table. So would like to see some of that as, as an option as well. Um, there was another kind of option thrown out there for as, a, as another, 
um, which was what if um, Indian Springs, um, since it's you know the growth of Waco and its premium property, um, and it was brought up that there could be a lot of money uh, brought by selling that, and then um, and using that possibly to address other areas of growth right there. But overall, felt that Carver is um, a huge part of the community. It's got a, a historical background in Waco, so really felt strongly about definitely keeping. Carver um, over Indian Springs on that part. And with that, um, I will pass it to the last person we have to hear from is Casey. Yeah, great. And so um, our group, you know, at the beginning, we sort of dove right into sort of questions, concerns, you know, we ended up circling back later on to sort of say, oh yeah, we saw option three was pretty well liked. We didn't really take exception to that. Um, my group, I'm gonna call it, assigned us homework essentially, which is pretty good. <laughs> and so we had a lot of discussion, something they would like to, to see in a future community meeting like this is, you know, how we're maintaining equity across the campuses, both new and existing, and this is across all school levels. Um, we also talked a little bit, just like Jessica and some of the other groups noted, transportation cost impacting. You know, we sort of mentioned it and then kind of circled back and said, well, Indian Spring, there are little to no walkers there. And so you're already transporting Indian Spring students. And so moving them over to Carver is a couple extra minutes, but it's probably not gonna be a huge cost driver. And we talked a little bit about how it's not included in the numbers we evaluated today, because the numbers we evaluated today were purely building and site-based and didn't include you know, your, your staff in your infrastructure, and not infrastructure, your, your support, like bussing, maintenance, et cetera. Um, we also had one of our things they would like us to follow up on is when we're talking about Tennyson, for example, currently Atlas, the gifted and talented program is centralized there and would like to hear about if there's a plan to redistribute that across all middle school campuses. You know, it was discussed perhaps that should be uh, an advantage available to uh, all campuses. Um, we also talked a little bit about losing, you know, there's um, a lot of media or um, talk around town about losing um, family students, particularly at the middle school level. And so, you know, acknowledging that both options two and three provide some, a new facility or two, and that we think would help, you know, with public perception. And then a big one that, that we talked about is redistricting. And so the question came up is, oh, how are we gonna redistrict this? And, and we reported back that ultimately it's the board to make that decision. And so the discussion on the group is they would love to see community involvement in that or participation to gauge the interest and so understand the impact of that. Um, and then the last two questions we had that, uh, you know, they would like us to see followed up with at a future meeting or publication or something is, you know, the impact of Transformation Waco, you know, is there an impact from that group and vice versa? And then also, um, you know, we talked a little bit about Lake Air Montessori in two different veins. You know, we heard, we heard a few comments that, you know, in the middle school realm, Lake Air Montessori is actually a pretty small population compared to the others. But then we also heard on the flip side, it's a really important and unique program and it would be nice to see that available on other in other areas of town so we kind of went a little hot and cold not hot and cold but up and up and down on uh like on montessori magnet for middle school and i think that summarized it so we'll have to come up with a strategy to to make sure all these questions are answered both the ones in the chat and the ones we have from our small groups that's right. We, we have homework, Casey, that we have to work on here after this. Mm -hmm. Exciting stuff. And I think it was great discussion. Uh, and I think, Jessica, if you want to bring the presentation back up, you know, I think after hearing this, and I, it seems like a lot of the voices were still were leaning towards three, uh, didn't really hear too many twos out of there. But we want to go back and confirm uh, just kind of how everybody feels after talking about a little bit more, getting a little bit more information uh, here. And so... If Josh, you can uh, let me share my screen again. I can bring up that presentation. You can do that survey one more time. Okay, it should happen now. And this will it, this will be the the last little part, and then we will close it out. So again, we were able to break into our groups, talk about the different elements. 
Uh, so again, if you'll bring out your phones, uh, you should be able to just start the next text section if the, the, what this one is active. Uh, and then we would ask you to vote again uh, to see if anything has changed in, in everyone's opinion. People are already, we're racking up 10 plus votes. Looks like option number three is still very strong. And I assume uh, option number four is the, uh, I'll call it the plus Lake Air Montessori uh, focus uh, there along the way. And if it's not, if you'll add some notes in the chat or any thoughts about that, that I would appreciate it. All right, still very strong support for option number three, but really focused in uh, a little bit more on the other this time, but no option number ones uh, as we maintain. So good, good information. Uh, and Chris did confirm that is a yes for Lake Air Montessori uh, within the chat. And so this will actually round out uh, 7.58 here, wrap up and next steps uh, for our meeting. So again, uh, we have now finished uh, meeting number five here. We're going to meet again on April 12th. Uh, and so very similar discussion on this one that we'll be talking about elementary schools. So, so be ready to discuss. Uh, appreciate everybody's participation and appreciate everybody's focus tonight. Great discussion. And we will look forward to seeing you here in three weeks. Dr. McCannon there, Angela, anything you wanna close out on? I'll let our, uh, thank you all. I will let our board president close out the meeting. Thank you everyone. There's a, a lot of great uh, discussion. Be sure um, if you have any last questions to put them in the chat before you leave tonight or when you get the email from Dr. Kim Cannon with the PowerPoint presentation and you read it and have some questions, be sure and respond so that um, they can be prepared to uh, provide the information that y'all are asking for when we meet again. Okay, good luck on everybody's brackets. And with that at, oh, look at that, 7.59. So we have another minute or two if you wanna drop things in the chat.